doing it over and over, learning the skills of communication, learning the skills of recruiting and sales, learning the skills of organization, learning the skills of enterprise, the bit of pain I had to go through. Little did I know back then how small the price was going to be compared to the incredible return. And I promise you that will happen for you if you will carefully here pay this price. If you will consistently here pay this price. If you will conscientiously here pay this price. I promise you the reward will come in dimensions that you cannot now imagine. You will have places to serve. You will have places to go. You will have people coming back to you as the years unfold saying, you've touched my life, you've touched my health, you've touched my family, you've touched my future. Along with your bank account that grows, that's not the most important thing to grow. Here's the most important thing to grow. Self-esteem, self-worth, self-judgment that says, I paid the price, the return is mine, it tastes sweet. And it's not just the money in the bank. It's not what you can count in terms of coin. It's what you can count in terms of heart. It's what you can count in terms of soul. It's what you can count in terms of friendship. It's what you can count in terms of relationship. It's what you can count in terms of someone smiling in your face and saying, you're meaningful to me. You've been valuable to me. When you add all of that up, it's beyond rubies, it's beyond diamonds, it's beyond millions, it's beyond treasures uh, hidden away in, in the earth, it's, it's beyond all other value, this kind of value that's shared among human beings. That's why I'm here, right? Not here for the money, don't need the money. I, I'm not here because, you know, I just love to travel, right? <laughs> I am here to make an investment. And the drama of payoff for me, especially the last 25 years, has been so extraordinary that to have a chance one more time to come here and make a deposit of my experience, I wouldn't have missed the opportunity. I wouldn't have missed it. Whatever I had to do to get here, fly all night, fly all day, you know, take care of whatever tasks need to be taken care of, right? When I finally discovered this morning my suit need ironing, guess who ironed it? Guess who pressed it? I did. Pressed my own suit pressed my own shirt. I thought, sure, they'd be okay, but I didn't check till this morning. You're supposed to check the night before, and I was a little late. So sure enough, this morning, before the proceedings were underway, I'm up there with the ironing board. You should see me. I'm a sight to see. I am not good at it. In fact, it probably shows. I appreciate that. But guess what? I gladly do all that. To have a chance to come here and invest one more time, share my experiences one more time, enjoy the success already achieved here one more time, but also to see if we can't labor faithfully with our minds and with our attention and see if we can't grasp a bit more of life, the essence, the opportunity, the chance, and see if we can't blend that with our ability, our eagerness, our willingness to commit and be faithful to a cause and see what it'll do for ourselves and our family and the people we care most about, make a contribution to the country and who knows eventually to the world. I wouldn't have missed that chance. That's why I'm here and I know that's why you're here and we're gonna carry on. For some of you that are uh, here for the first time, I should probably just briefly tell my story. I grew up in Idaho, farm country. Uh, my father still lives there on the old homestead. He just turned 92 a few months ago. And I was on the other side of the world, but when I got back home, uh, just a little while back, he was so proud to show me he got his driver's license renewed for four years. <laughs> Until he's 96. So he's excited about that. Anyway, I went to high school in this little farm community, southwest Idaho. Our farm overlooks the Snake River. Neat place to grow up. I was born in Yakima, Washington. But um, my parents moved to Idaho when I was one year old, so I grew up there. And I went to high school, graduated, went to college one year. Halfway through my second year, I decided I was smart enough 
and quit. Big mistake on my part, but I made it. Thinking I'm smart enough to get a job, and at the time I thought, you know, if you're smart enough to get a job, how much smarter do you need to be? So with that bit of shallow thinking, I quit school, went to work. A little while later, with some fancy promises, got a young lady to marry me. Fortunately for me, she said yes. We started a family, and uh, I'm out there working as hard as I can, but falling a little bit behind every year. Probably normal, living the normal average American young couple's life. But I'd made these big promises, and uh, I was working hard and trying to make it fit. But by the time I reached age 25, I got pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank. Creditors now calling once in a while, saying, you told us the check was in the mail. I'm getting embarrassed by all that. And uh, really embarrassed about being behind on my big mouth promises to my family, wondering what should I do, where could I go from here. And then good fortune came my way. Difficult to describe sometimes how something remarkable happens at a particular time. But my good fortune was I had a chance to meet a rich man. Not just rich in money and wealth, but rich in ideas and rich in experience, as I found out later. A friend of mine went to work for him, and he said, you got to meet this man. And he described him. He said he's rich, but easy to talk to. His philosophy of life was unique. And I got so intrigued, I said, i got to meet this man. Had a chance to meet him, Mr. Schof, Earl Schof. I was impressed. He was rich, obviously. Uh, but he was easy to talk to, comfortable to be around. And as soon as I met him, I said, I'd give anything if I could be like that, that comfortable and that rich. And uh, what would it take to live a life like that? I was so intrigued. And then I thought, if I could just get around somebody like him, if he'd teach me, I'd learn it all. And that was my good fortune. Uh, he hired me a little while later, and I worked for him for five years before he died at age 49. But the last five years of his life, fortunately for me, I got to spend those five years with him. And my dream came true. He coached me, taught me. Uh, he taught me the principles. He taught me to refine my thinking. He bluntly told me the truth in terms that I could understand. He had only gone to the ninth grade in school, so he had a way of putting things in simple terms. And I got the message. And uh, the things he shared with me during that five years before he died literally transformed my life. Uh, incredibly changed my bank account, changed my income, changed my future, changed everything. And what a chance that was for me to get around someone who had the ideas and was willing to share. A lot of rich people aren't that willing to share but I found one that was. And uh, it was an extraordinary experience. Changed my bank account, certainly. By the time I was 31, I was a millionaire. Um, but he changed my thinking. A uh, lot of the things I speak about today, the origin, uh, the, the origin of those thoughts came from that five-year experience. I've expanded on it. My own experience has taught me. And I've had other mentors along the way that have added to my life given me things to ponder and wonder about. And they have coached me and taught me along the way, but this was the beginning. Now, my parents laid a great foundation. I was an only child. You know, they spoiled me, and, but they also taught me, laid a good foundation that served me as an anchor all these years. But Mr. Schof opened up the world and let me know that I could become anything I wanted to become. My income could change, my health could change, my relationships could change. Uh,